Hi, welcome Bay Community family. I'm back. It's another Wellness Wednesday, and this is a pre-recording because it was the only way I could get a very sought-after counselor in the Annapolis area to have time to do an interview. We're very fortunate tonight to have um, Lance David, the owner and a therapist at Annapolis Counseling Center in West Annapolis with us, and he has been in this industry for over 20 years. He's extremely skilled, very sought after, and is a privilege and an honor to have you um, do an interview with us. So welcome and thank you. Thank you, Mandy. Good to be here. Um, so as you know, the parenting series, as I've told you before, uh, I do it every Wednesday evening, and it's basically a way for us as therapists to kind of help our local parents, right? We don't get an instruction manual when uh, children arrive. And a lot of us wish there was one. And I see a lot of things in the time that I've been a therapist with parents and I see patterns and, and things that I wish I could just get out there for everybody. So what I've been doing is um, I find certain things, certain topics that I see in multiple people. I usually find some research on it. We talk about it. Um, and I get feedback from the community. So with that said, um, and your extensive experience, what do you see with, you know, with parents uh, in a therapy setting and, and what could you share with us? I think that, um, probably the biggest mistake I see parents making in general is forgetting what it was like to be a kid. Um, I think I, I see, I've seen this with my, myself. I have uh, three daughters and um, like, I, I don't think of myself as a parent. I just think of myself as a guy. And then um, I say something, you know, an offhand remark or I get angry with my kids and, and they, they have this reaction to me like, um, like I'm important. <laughs> and I think I forget that to them, you know, I am like the authority. My kids are getting older, so I'm less and less of an authority, but, um, it's just really easy to forget how big we are in our children's eyes. I think. Isn't that so true? Um, Yes, as the community knows, I have two kids and mine are a little bit younger than yours. I have an eight and 10 year old. And um, and you're right. It is funny. I uh, so uh, plug for a game that I have no connection to called Totem. Uh, it's this little card game and it's basically attributes um, about, you know, personal attributes. And what you do is and they all have little like totem animal, you know, spirit animal type things associated with them. It's super cute. And you pick out the ones that you think are most like the person. And, you know, speaking mm -hmm. of like forgetting to be a kid and forgetting how your kids look up to you, my eight-year-old who is super feisty and super independent and we fight, I swear all the time. Um, she picked out some of the most amazing qualities about me. And it, I mean, I teared up. <laughs> So you're right. And and so share with us, your your uh, daughters are a little bit older. So I think, you know, in contrast to my eight and 10 year old, what are you noticing as a shift in terms of your importance and how that relationship changes a little bit? It certainly changes. Um, but, and I, I, I'm still surprised that my, my oldest is 21 and um, she still looks at me differently than I see myself for sure. Uh, you know, when I see myself through her eyes, um, I, both my ability to hurt her is, is probably stronger than I wish it was. And, and just my ability to, to speak life into her, like, you know, to, to have the ability to have a strong impact, um, is just, uh, it's an awesome privilege and easy to forget, just, just easy to forget the kind of um, power we wield with our words and our actions um, as a parent. That is so true. And I have definitely seen that both in the parents and the kids that I've had in my space, uh, therapeutic space. Um, I'm sure you've seen it too. 
it was interesting you brought up the term privilege. Um, often with privilege, there comes a little bit of a burden, right? And so I wonder with the the parents that you have seen, do you get any sense of that that burden that might come along with the privilege of being able to um, influence their children? Um, yeah, I, I think the easiest thing to do, <laughs> um, like when we're not paying attention is just to, when we're, when we're running on autopilot, right? We, we, we like running on autopilot and not have to think too hard about what we're doing. But when we, when we do that, um, you can talk about burden. I think off the, the biggest burden we have as a parent is that we, um, end up acting like the way we were parented if like if we don't um actively well or sometimes we we um you know the pendulum swings to the total opposite side so like there's i think the burden often is like our unconscious perspectives on uh just how we were parented what how we were treated as a kid like so so often that um the clouds who we who we us to be who we really want to be as a parent. That is such a great point that, um, and especially parents, right? It's, it's hard. I joke and say, if anyone had ever told me how hard parenting was, that our species would have been already be extinct. Like if we had learned that because no one would have kids We're like, Oh my God, that's way too hard. Um, and anyway, uh, that said, you know, you bring up the point of, you know, when we are stressed as parents and, and we, we shift to autopilot because it's, it's the best we can do in the situation we're in, right? You know, we've got all this other stuff where we have financial burdens, we have professional burdens and, and our own personal burdens, whatever those may be, um, or responsibilities. And so we shift to autopilot in different aspects of our lives. And one of them can be parenting. And we shift to the way we were parented. And certainly, parenting has shifted significantly in the past few decades. If you think about how baby boomers were parented compared to uh, Gen X and then the millennials, um, it's really different. And in fact, um, it's as if you could read my mind or maybe you did your homework. We posted not too long ago, this chasing childhood video that talks a lot about the shift of parenting and um, how now parents are really, you know, we have these helicopter and bulldozer parents, which is another one I've learned about, uh, where they just like get rid of all the barriers for their child. So their child has no barrier to get to the goal they need to get to, right? Sometimes that means like, and we've seen that in the news in the past five or six years, you know, these celebrity parents have basically bought their, you know, mm. their kid into a, a good school or whatever the case may be. Yeah. That's called a bulldozer parent. I was like, Oh, that okay. makes sense. Um, but anyway, so you, you mentioned two things you talked about, we either go back to this default and we do it more than just parenting, right? We do it in our relationships with others. We do it in all sorts of things when we, it, cause it's, we just default to it. And then you said, or the pendulum might shift to the other side. Um, so what I wanted to say first about the, um, you know, that default setting is I have realized as a parent, and I, I I say this a lot to the parents I see, is I think we forget too. Not only do we forget what it's like to be a kid, and in forgetting what it's like to be a kid, we forget that we had to learn certain skills. So I find myself a lot more modeling the behavior I want to see. So the other day, my husband and I got into a little tiff, um, of course, about something silly, because that seems to always be the case, right? So I walked upstairs and I talked to him and I said, look, you know, we got a little tiff in front of our kids. Now we have to go resolve it in front of them because otherwise they won't understand what it's like to have a difference of an opinion and have a mutual respect. So we walked back down and it was kind of, it felt a little fake at first. He's kind of, he went back down. Of course he's an engineer, right? So he's not good at the whole feeling sharing thing, but he was good about it. And he's like, so when you said such and such, my feelings were really hurt. This is not something he would normally said, but he said it in front of my kid, our kids and I was super pleased. And then we had this whole dialogue back and forth about, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Like this was my intent and I'm really you know, sorry that it came across this way. And we, walk, we worked through it. And then we went on and we all hung out again. 
And I think it helped us too. Like we resolved the conflict instead of saying like grumpy with each other. But for our kids, they saw how to mend a, a broken relationship. And we forget that we, we, we learned that somewhere, right? So back to your like you default, you know, we have to model the behavior we want to see, whether it's saying please and thank you. We're pretty good at that as parents, but then all this other stuff that we don't model well, whether it's how we spend money or how we deal with fights, um, we have to model that. Um, so, okay. So going the pendulum swing a little, you said something about sometimes we go the opposite. And I wonder if you could talk a little bit about that and what you've seen in that realm and any insight. Yeah, well, I think even that uh, I, I wasn't aware of the bulldozer parent term. I like that's I I can see that, but <laughs> I think, uh, you know, I think even ways like if if our parents didn't do that for us, you know, and and we um, felt behind or like things were too hard as kids, then we want to you know overcompensate and then you know we sort of be be that for the parents or you know sometimes a somebody who grew up in a really harsh environment or very strict will be like I'm not have not not doing that to my kids and then then we then maybe they won't have any boundaries or you know um, expectations of their kids which research shows is not good for kids they you know high expectations and good boundaries provide a container for kids in a direction so uh, yeah, it helps boost confidence too, right? Because they know the rules that they're playing within, you know, or with. Yeah, and they know, then they'll they'll push them too. So, <laughs> and that's okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a really good. Yeah, that's a great point. I'm glad you bring up the boundaries thing. Um, I've noticed, especially with uh, parents that are divorced, they struggle keeping the same set of boundaries. Um. And often, or not often, but well, in mm -hmm. our offices, or at least in mine, often I see parents where they have two different sets of boundaries. So then the child either pushes the limit or knows how to kind of manipulate each household, which has an impact negatively on the parents and the child, or, you know, the child just is confused and anxious and mad um, and it, it's not helpful. Um, so yeah, setting boundaries and also, you know, making sure the boundaries are the same everywhere, um, within limits, right? Like grandparents are allowed to spoil their, their grandkids. Well, and, you know, I've, I've heard that before, um, you know, like needing the same boundaries. Um, but honestly, uh, kids are really smart. You know, I mean, kids figure out, they know that, you know, they're supposed to behave a one way at church versus out on the playground versus at grandma's versus, you know, at their best friend's house. And I think they're, they're smart too, because they know how to use that against parents. <laughs> um, and I think, you know, it's, it's just normal for them to push the boundaries. And I think if, if as a parent, you're clear on what, um, you know, what's acceptable to you, what you're going to allow, the kind of behavior you want, um, even if it's, you know, even for divorced parents that have, that the other parent has a very different, um, yeah, uh, whatever standards. I, I think kids can figure that out. And, um, yeah, so that it's interesting. They're, they're, they're really smart. Like, yeah, yeah, they definitely are. I mean, I think I use the quote all the time that you shared with me. So I'm, you know, I, the Bay community's heard this before about, uh, I often use the quote that you say that kids are excellent observers, but horrible interpreters. Um, and I wonder if you want to share a little bit more about that, because I think it was related to this, you know, being really smart and mm -hmm. noticing differences. And if I put you on the spot, I can help fill in the blanks if you need. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, no, I, I, I say that, um, and I say that to a lot of clients who adults who are you know working through trauma um it's often we when we have like a traumatic experience we see uh we see the memory through the lens of how old we were when it happened and it kind of gets stuck there but often that that lens for a kid um 
they just they just don't understand stuff right they they um you know how often i'm i'm blanking on the examples from my own kids life but it, they're just the the silly conclusions they come up with um and that are usually involve them being at the center of the universe because that's yes that's how they are you know the a, a child thinks and sometimes as adults we think this too like you know i i knew this was going to be I shouldn't have had my birthday party on that Saturday because it. I knew it was going to rain. Like they, they sort of feel like they had the control, right? Or they, they were able to influence um, reality just by their thoughts. Um, and that's because kids think that a lot of times if something bad happens, they, they blame themselves. So, um, you know, then that's, it's just, it's very normal for a child to do that. And, and in fact, it's, it's not all bad. They, you know, kids have very little control and for them to feel safe, they kind of project control into the, into the world that they don't really have. So they'll come up, you know, the, the, the interpretive moves that, that kids make are just typically not right. They, they don't have a lot of experience. Um, you know, adults get mad about things that, because they had a bad day, but a child will rarely, you know, think, oh, mom or dad had a bad day. They think, you know, I, I'm a bad kid. Um, so, the, but they, that observant part, you know, they're always picking up what we're doing, what what's going on. And uh, even when we wish they weren't. Yeah, that's um, such a great point. And I have two comments related to that. One, um, I often tell kids and I try and get parents to practice this too, of when something happens, kind of stating the emotion that you feel with something, right? So, um, and I've been, I do this with, my son has picked this up pretty well, actually. He's he's pretty intuitive in terms of emotion. Um, and so he'll say, hey, mommy, you know, you seem upset. And if he gets me first, you know, now he asks, but if before I would come in, I'm like, Hey buddy, I'm a little irritable and it has nothing to do with you. And then I explain, like I was at work and some stuff happened and I'm just super grumpy about it. And I just need a few minutes before we can go and do something together. Um, or if they do something and I seem to overreact, I'll say like, Oh, I'm really mad right now. And that's not really fair because what you did doesn't, you know, give, I shouldn't have this type of response. Anyway, so I do that a lot with um, parents and and it, what's been interesting now to what you were saying before is kind of that locus of control thing. It does allow kids to help shift their interpretation because you're opening up that dialogue by leading with the feeling and saying like, I feel this. And then it also helps their vocabulary. So when they are experiencing something similar, their vocabulary is there. Um, and now I'm losing my train of thought as the other thing I was going to say, but, um, oh, related to locus of control. I also see with parents a lot, you know, on one hand, what you brought up earlier is that we do wield a lot of power and influence on our children, but that's different from control. And, and I wonder if you could, speak to that a little bit because and 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 where I'm coming from is I definitely have a few clients where they have kids that are acting out or are struggling or are manipulating the different roles of different households and all of that goes on with you know divorce situations and um you know blended families and all that um and and the parents feel very frustrated and sometimes they'll really lock down and they'll try and control everything and then that kind of doesn't work or they feel out of control and they feel anxious and overwhelmed. And I'm just wondering if you can speak to any of that and any either advice or things that you've seen kind of help parents through those types of situations. I know that, um, I think, you know, I, we're, people are different in terms of like their uh, time horizon focus. So uh, some people are like future oriented. Some people are like mm -hmm. more in the moment. Some people are kind of focused on the past. And I think with parenting, it's really good, especially if you struggle with f focusing on the future is, is to keep the long view in mind. 
like that um one if if you mess up with your kid uh, on whatever issue you're going to get another chance if not today tomorrow or soon um and then also that you know we're we're not raising children we're raising adults because <laughs> that's the end goal is that we we want and um any control we end up putting on we're gonna have to take off at some point or you know the, it's gonna get jerked away from us anyway because we just we're not gonna be able to enforce the control so i think slowing down and um i think i know it's like uh it's, it's really easy to feel like you have to have the the, the right answer or you know we got to handle this exactly right but um we're we're just doing the best we can all of us and if we can learn from we, learn from our kids and with our kids about um the best way to handle a given situation and just know that we're you know we're all in process um the obviously our kids are so important to us that that's why we often make you know uh snap decisions bad decisions um because because they're important our anxiety rises and anytime we act out of anxiety um we, we don't have full access to our brains our anxiety like closes down the window of our focus and we lose the long view a lot of times. So I think, you know, maybe some advice is to, to go slow when you're, um, anytime you're trying to correct your kid, um, you can take a pause. You can say, Hey, I, I'm probably too mad to deal with this right now, honey. So, um, we're, we're going to talk about it later. And it's, you know, it's good to, have a partner for single parents, you know, God bless them. It's really hard to make all those decisions on your own, but you know, bouncing uh, ideas off a friend or, um, mm. you know, a, your own parent, like hearing yourself say things before you say them to your kids. Like it's, it's really okay to take your time and make good decisions rather than, you know, I think a lot of times we feel like we're we're supposed to be in control and always know what um, to say and how to handle things. Oh, we don't. We just we just don't. And for that to that to be okay, um, and and you know, working out in collaboration, I think is can be really helpful. Wow, what great advice! That you know, slow down, take your time and recognize that we don't have all the answers and let your kid know that too, right? Um, it's okay to work through the problem together. It's okay to take a break and come back to it. And I love the comment about, um, you know, if you make a mistake with them, you have a chance to repair it, right? There's always a chance to repair it. There's always a chance to go back. And, and the point is to not, you know, it's the cumulative effect, right? Like you make a mistake, work to repair it and learn from it, which is the whole part of learning from it. Right. And then, you know, back to where we started learning from it is also remembering what it was like to be a kid and what it was like to have a parent speak to us in a certain way or have a certain rule. Or I was just saying to my husband the other day about, Hey, I think it would be really important if you shared some stories from when you were a kid, when it was tougher for you to make friends or like you had an, a moment where it was awkward, like you were in a situation where it's tough. Cause we were, that was a conversation we were having with our kids the other day and, um, and telling him like, Hey, share. And it was all about like remembering what it was like to be a kid. And, and, and his mom does a very good job. My mother-in-law does a very good job of like forcing like, Hey, you should be friends with this family. Um, which caught me way off guard when I joined the family. I was like, Oh, okay. I have forced friends now. That's fun. Um, Anyway, uh, yeah, so back to the, you know, remembering what's like to be a child and and just like children, right? They're kind of in the moment and they're enjoying it and and they might be running around fast, but really, you know, they are learning and learning's a, a slower process. So 
awesome. Yeah. And, you know, as I'm thinking about that, the, a few times, I wish I did it more when I, when my kids were in trouble, I asked them what they thought should happen to them. And, you know, my memory says that every time they picked something more harsh than what I would have come up with. And, you know, that's great. Like, uh, I didn't have to come up with it. And usually I would probably say, okay, well, that, are, you, are you sure you can lose your phone for a month? Because, or, or whatever it was that they, they, they kind of, uh, you know, off the handle or, you know, and then you can show mercy to the kids and then it's, it's good like, yeah, maybe, or something. So, and yeah. then they get to own it, right? Like that's teaching them ownership. What a great, there's so many lessons in that. That's awesome. Um, well, I want to be conscious of time. Cause I, I promised you a, a certain period of time and, you know, time flies when you're having fun. I always have great conversations with you. Um, I wanted to give you a chance to tell us a little bit more about Annapolis counseling center. Um, and you know, all about it. So please uh, share with us because you're another resource for our you know Bay community because we you know, service everybody and and I want to share other resources. So tell us about Annapolis Counseling Center. So we have uh, nine of us on staff at um, uh, practice in West Annapolis with uh, clinicians that have different specialties from kids and teens, couples, trauma, um, lots of different. Uh, really good therapists that um, some have openings and uh, we're seeing so glad that we're back to seeing people in person and not just online, but we, we do that as well. So um, yeah, we've got a, got a good little crew and um, it's a, it's a, it's a good place to be. Yep. And I can second that because I am one of the therapists on staff there. Um, and it is a, a wonderful place to work. All of the therapists there are just really kind, wonderful, smart people. Um, and it's a beautiful location in West Annapolis and the inside is impeccably decorated. I always love when I, I spend my weekends there. Um, well, thank you so much for your time today. Um, I want to give you a chance if you have any last words, um, you know, to share with us before we say goodbye. Well, just for parents, I think I would say it's um it's not what you say it's what you say next oh wow i love that that I think it's good that's a good advice for a therapist or a parent because even if you screw it up you got a chance to repair it and yeah that is so wonderful it's not what you say it's what you say next it's funny i interviewed a um parent last week and we had a frozen movie theme going on and it was about doing the next right thing so we'll continue that um uh, it's right. not about what you say but what you say next i love that lance thank you so much for sharing your time with us today um and and sharing your knowledge uh with the bay community uh we really really appreciate it and we appreciate that you're out there helping the community